Understanding Marxism series. Oh, boy. Why does anyone still care about Marxism? Karl Marx has been dead for well over a century. <laughs> Everywhere Marxism has been tried, it is left. Fucking the invisible hand of capitalism guy, what's his name? John Marston? He's been dead for like 300 years. Who gives a shit? Death and destruction in its wake. In fact, nothing in the last thousand years comes close to the amount of tyranny, terror, and mass murder. Okay, tyranny and terror you can't measure. Those aren't real things. Those are just like things that you feel. Mass murder, I mean, you know, 7 million people die every year as a result of just starvation alone as a direct result of capitalism, so. Brought about by Marxist regimes. Yet Marxism lives. It may present itself today as postmodernism, multiculturalism, feminism, environmentalism, or critical race theory. Okay, <laughs> there was no way any of these things are. Also environmentalism, that's hilarious. But it's still Marxism. So, there must be good reasons why it is endured, even flourished in the face of unremitting failure. Say what you will about Marx the economist. He was a master psychologist. He recognized that there are many people in every society who are motivated by envy and resentment. Marx speaks directly to them. He tells them that the responsibility for the misery in their lives belongs to the capitalist system. If we can just get rid of that, he promises we can eliminate poverty, inequality, exploitation, class conflict, war, and alienation. Not a bad list if you're looking to start a revolution. But there's more. Marxism assures us that this socialist utopia is close at hand. This is crazy, dude. Sorry. I was trying to find... Uh, I'm, I'm looking up an example of what to compare this to, right? This is actually a good example. Available to all. Check this out. Funny coincidence. Check this out. This is anti-communist propaganda from the 30s, from Nazi Germany, saying that, you know, Bolsheviks, I don't know what this means, but, you know, Jewish communism, globalism is going to destroy the, the world, right? I just want you to keep this image in mind when we hear this man speak. Not in some distant future or in the next life, but here and now. All we have to do is overcome one little obstacle, human nature. Marx expressed his <clears throat> deepest views on this subject in his economic- I want that as a poster kinda looks sick. This is Nazi propaganda. <laughs> that looks pretty, that's an awesome- Guys, it's Nazi prop- you gotta stop. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> guys, this is Nazi propaganda. That's metal. Stop. <laughs> guys, you can't do that. <laughs> but it looks so cool. Stop saying that. Jew here, unfortunately, it does look cool. I mean, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Why do they make it look so good? Because it's propaganda! <laughs> the Nazi propaganda is working on me, a Jewish person. <laughs> That's why propaganda works. This is bad! <laughs> kind of fire, Ethan, it's hype. Stop! <laughs> uh, someone make a Marxist version? Yeah. No, I see what you guys mean. It's just, it's really funny. That you guys were all immediately like, you know what? That's pretty cool. ...in philosophical manuscripts of 1844. They can be summed up in one phrase. The enemy of being is having. Listen, listen, listen. The problem with the, the comparison I'm trying to draw is that Nazis were very anti-communist. So when you hear conservatives talk about re being really, really anti-communist, I just, you got to look for the same kind of patterns in their speech, like saying Marxism. It's just a replacement for Bolshevism. So just keep that in mind. In other words, the desire to own things makes you a bad person. No, the desire to own things is to be human, you fucking idiot. But the problem is the kind of ownership that the Industrial Revolution created and then you know america furthered duh, furthered but the kind of consumption that america generates like having two car garage big house two cars it's a castro quote but it's great like imagine if every single person in china wanted to own a car 
that would be that would not be sustainable for infrastructure, for climate, pollution, just the economy. How do you produce a billion cars? What if everyone in China and India had that same dream of owning a car? That would destroy the world. So why do we allow capitalism to pitch this idea of individualism and individual ownership when collectively people are much stronger? And we've known that throughout our history. Anyway. However, you're not to blame. The blame belongs to capitalism. Okay, true. <clears throat> Based. The most common interpretation of Marx's philosophy suggests that he opposed capitalism because it creates an unjust world of inequality, exploitation, yeah. and class conflict. Uh -huh. Marxism, according to this view, is all about equalizing income and social status. Sure. This is true, but it doesn't go far enough. Marx saw the accumulation of material wealth as dehumanizing. He's, this the is more based. money yeah. and material possessions one acquires, the more estranged one is from his true humanity. Yeah. And what was that? In the philosopher's socialist paradise, one gets to eat, drink, and go to the theater free of charge and without having to earn a living. Yeah. How is that not utopia? How is that not perfect? How is that not ideal? Best of all, you get to do it without the guilt of being a moocher. All you have to do is enjoy yourself. Or, as Marx put it, you can do one thing today and another tomorrow. Hunt in the morning, fish in the afternoon, and rear cattle in the evening. Yeah. Yes, rear cattle in the evening. That's how in touch Marx was with reality. What do you mean, dude? He, he's from the 1800s. What else do you think they did? Fucking played Game Boy? But who cleans out the sewers? does the dirty jobs that keep a society functioning. People who are paid really well and have fucking full ownership over their, over their means of production. Is he saying like without, a, without like in a communist utopia without currency? You know, people who are given fucking nicer houses for doing that or whatever. I don't know. Ironically, in the evil capitalist society, the sewer cleaner freely chooses to take on his job. What? Job. That just, he just fucking contradicted himself. He's saying, in communism, no one would choose to do dirty jobs. But in capitalism, people love choosing to do dirty jobs. They actually do it because they love it. Jobs that keep a society functioning. Ironically. It's because they like have nothing else. In capitalism, it's because they have nothing else. If they don't do it, they might die the evil capitalist society, the sewer cleaner freely chooses to take on his job. That's insane. <clears throat> In the socialist paradise, coercion is almost always required. How is capitalism not coercive? If he doesn't do it, he's going to starve to death. That's coercive. Marx never bothered with such messy details. He left that to others. Unfortunately, those others always turn out to be megalomaniacs like Lenin, Stalin, Mao, Castro. Yeah, Lenin, who never held power. <laughs> Pol Pot and Hugo Chavez. Oh, yeah, Pol Pot, glass. Oh, my God. Dude. They were the ones who brought Marx to life and in the process caused tens of millions to suffer and die. Yeah, man. Totally. For sure. Megalovania. Contrary to Marx's claims, work freely chosen brings both money and dignity. No. Furthermore, you just were talking about the fucking sewer cleaner who classically underpaid, by the way. Most people work landscaper. Any horrible job is heinously underpaid. Fucking the rail workers are about to go on strike, dude. Best when they pursue their own self-interest, an idea Marx despised. What? He was just talking about going to the movie theater for free. How is that not pursuing your own self-interest? Like, he's literally saying, like, Marx wanted all these things that he didn't want and didn't want all these things he actually wanted. And capitalism is actually the good thing. <laughs> to him, self-interest turns everyone into Ebenezer Scrooge. Greedy, grasping, and unfeeling. Dude, you are just a, It's the classic conservative move. I'm just going to describe capitalism and say it's communism. <laughs> Not only is money, that is capital, inherently corrupting, 
but the acquisition of it can't be done honestly or fairly. He's so right. The rich got rich by exploiting the worker. <laughs> yeah. To Marx, there's no other possible explanation. Uh. For many today, there is no other possible explanation. Yeah. For these people, Marx offers a philosophical justification for their anger, even their rage. From generation to generation, the formula never varies. Only by bringing the privilege down can the underprivileged be brought up. Yes. How do you think Soviet Russia turned from a bunch of fucking poor farmland into a world superpower in like 50 years? And then China did the same fucking thing. Again. Like, what do you mean? The venom that pours out of Marx's pen stems ultimately from the fact that reality wouldn't conform to his worldview. It never seems to have uh. occurred to him that people are complex beings with different talents, ambitions, and desires. It may be more accurate to say he didn't care. If people wouldn't conform to his worldview voluntarily... Is that a Fig Newton or am I blind? It is a Fig Newton. I love Fig Newton then the state would just have to use other methods of persuasion, like murder and terror. It all Listen, you know what? If you say, hey, CEO of BlackRock, the corporation that owns the majority of houses in America, I'm the government and I'm going to take some of these houses so we can sell them to people who need them. Or even just give them to people who need them. To house the homeless, we're going to uh, acquisition some of these houses. And then if the CEO of BlackRock is like, you know what? You're going to have to kill me for it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I'm not going to kill you for the greater good, CEO of BlackRock? I'll kill a landlord for the greater good. The death of that landlord would then allow a family to live in a house. <laughs> if I'm the government in a video game. It all made sense to the philosopher as he toiled away in a corner of the British Museum or in his squalid <sighs> London apartment. Uh, to be fair, Karl Marx was notoriously stinky and Delish. didn't shower. <laughs> Maybe that's old propaganda, but I like to believe it's real. He just like me for real. What is astonishing is that millions came to believe him. What is tragic is that millions more suffered and died because they did. What is scary is that millions continue to believe. I'm Brad Thompson professor of political science at Clemson University for Prager University. Prager. No one knows how to say it ever. In a remarkably short period of time, the philosophy of Karl Marx changed the course of history. At the height of its power, half the world fell under its dominion, kept there by a combination of fear, terror, and brute force. Yeah, Stalin was a classic Marxist. Like, that's the thing, right? I think the Soviet Union did a lot of good things and a lot of bad things. Just like America, I think they did a few more good things than bad, to be honest. I think America, because it's existed for longer, done more bad things, For to be real. <laughs> I am no fan of Stalin, but neither was fucking Lenin. <laughs> then suddenly, in the late 1980s, it imploded. By all rights, this should have been the end of Marxism. Like, it imploded because Stalin tied a lot of the economy around him being a strong man. This man of upper teeth? I don't think so. But it hasn't turned out that way. From environmentalism with its rejection of free markets to critical race theory, which <laughs> sees white patriarchy as the source of all evil. Not all evil, just a lot of it. You'll find Marxism at its root. And that's just silly. Because there are plenty of liberals that are like all into critical race theory, but are still like, like they're not going to unionize. They think that's bad. The leaders of Black Lives Matter, for example, openly acknowledge their devotion to their leaders. What are their names? Who are they? Who are the leaders of Black Lives Matter? Who? Does anyone know their name in chat? Does anyone know who this is? Did you, did you guys go to the meeting? The Black Lives Matter meeting at the Black Lives Matter Center? With the Black Lives Matter leaders? Yeah, there's definitely leaders of the group, the organization. And there's three of them. Everybody knows that. Marxist ideology. How do we explain this fascination for something that... Ha you know who also was into Karl Marx? Abraham Lincoln. They were friends, actually. I'm not even joking. Abraham Lincoln and Karl Marx were pen pals. I mean, we all know Abraham Lincoln was like pretty fruity, so you never, you never know what old Abe, honest Abe was up to. <laughs> Has so utterly failed everywhere it's been put into practice. Uh, we can find answers in one of Marx's most. 
everywhere except Scandinavian countries because you don't consider that Marxism, even though it's, it, it is democratic socialism, but it's closer to Marxism than America is. Like, why do they always forget that? Why do they bring up Pol Pot, who is a, a United States puppet? Why do they bring up the USSR that was sabotaged by the United States during a, like, the I'm cold... Gay Lincoln truther. <laughs> We're all gay Lincoln truthers here. Lincoln was homophobic because he killed vampires. Well, you know, he came out of the closet after that. <laughs> Most enduring epigrams. From each according to his ability, to each according to his needs. Marx was a poor economist. But a talented journalist. He was a philosopher. What do you mean? The only actual job he also, ever why do they never bring up Engels? Ever had. He knew how to turn a phrase. But what does this slogan even mean? According to what ability? According to what need? And Each. There. <laughs> and who determines anyone's ability or anyone's need? Society. I don't know. Government. There's answers to your questions if you think about it a little bit. Marx never bothered to answer these obvious questions. He had much bigger things on his mind. Nothing less than the creation of an entirely new kind of world for an entirely new kind of human being. Oh my God, why does he sound, make him sound so evil? <laughs> He's like fucking Wesker from Resident Evil. Marx believed that by altering man's economic and political institutions, he could alter, or even better, rewire the human brain. He could conjure a new consciousness that would... This is... What the fuck are you saying? I spaced out for a second. What? <laughs> what does this have to do with anything? My guy. <laughs> what the fuck is this? To replace the old false one. This new man would be less selfish and acquisitive and more altruistic and communal. Okay, okay. Good. What? In short, he would be a superior... In short? <laughs> ...and acquisitive and more altruistic and communal. In short... In short? <laughs> he would be a superior type of man. Of course, this new man could only reach this goal if he wasn't preoccupied with having to earn money. He's got to stop sounding so based. According to Marx, money and the pursuit of it ruined everything. Yeah. Marx hated money. Yeah. But he's right is the problem. Maybe because he never found a way to make it. <laughs> he just didn't have enough. Getting rid of it was central to his worldview. Because he was jealous. Wow. This is like Elon reply guy level of fucking... This guy's like an Elon stan with his logic. You're just jealous. You don't get it. Once a person's subsistence, one's daily bread, <laughs> was distributed on the basis of need rather than greed, man's natural communal affections, long suppressed by his capitalist overlords, would be renewed. This is Marx channeling the 18th century French social thinker Jean-Jacques Rousseau, one of the few people Marx admired. According to Rousseau, this is what you must do if you want to create a new society. He who dares to undertake the making of a people's institutions must feel himself capable of changing human nature, of transforming each individual who by himself is a complete and solitary whole into part of a larger whole from which the individual receives his life and his being. That's, that's true. I agree with that. <laughs> understand this, and you understand not only a key feature of Marx's thought, but the dark history of the 20th century. They keep just saying things that are good and then being like, and that is how it is bad. <laughs> Marx took Rousseau literally. Human nature had to be returned to its allegedly pure, selfless state before capitalism with its enlightenment and Judeo-Christian values. These, those are three things that are very unrelated. <laughs> corrupted him. But creating this new man would be a formidable task. Marx anticipated that many would object, especially the owners and managers that had a large stake in the capitalist system. Yeah, why did you draw them as monopoly guys? Because they are, though. Because they're evil. Because they are bourgeois. Like, what? I don't understand. You're illustrating them as bad. Look, there's money coming out of his pockets. 
These people shouldn't exist if people are starving. <laughs> Friendly persuasion wasn't going to get the job done. That's their fault. <laughs> Only the ruthless application of state power would be up to the task. Yeah. Unless, like, if they wanted to fucking be normal, it's their choice. Oh my they act like it's, like, immediately, like, you have to. It's like, they could fucking become part of the commune. If Jeff Bezos was like, you know what, you're right. We do need communism. I am one with you. Fine. But he doesn't want to do that. That's his choice. So now he can, you know, Minecraft. <laughs> Marx was all for it. Me too. Private property, wage labor, competition and profits. Yeah, private property. They use this sneaky little thing where they're like, you know, you can't have private property. Private property and personal property are different things. There's nothing like Marx was never against owning a fucking house, but he was against owning a house in a private sense where you use it to make money, where you ransom the rent to someone else. These would have to go. The state now run by the workers themselves. Yeah. The dictatorship of the proletariat, as Marx called it, would control production and pricing. It would <clears throat> wisely manage the economy from each according to his ability to each according to his needs. And imagine how wonderful it would be. No more ego, no more self-interest. I thought he was going to say, no more e-girls. <laughs> Instead, everybody working for the benefit of everybody else. Peace, love, and harmony. That would suck for me. <laughs> for many, it's a very seductive idea. Who wouldn't aspire to live in such a world? Look around, a Marxist might say. The powerful exploit the weak, crushing the majority's noble aspirations. True. Your aspirations. True. Just so they can have more. Yes, that's true. That is demonstrably true. It's unfair and unjust. <sighs> How much better if we just start over, start clean? That's the Marxist socialist dream. In real life, it's a nightmare. Need but, like there's you're just saying that you're not saying why or how or proving it you're just saying it's bad for no like why is it bad needs become demands and demands become rights the best oh no not rights <laughs> best are mocked and the worst exalted what innovation withers while the government grows ever larger you know the government is how we landed on the moon and, you know, made the internet and computers. What innovation is strictly from capitalism from the last, like, hundred years? Cars? I guess cars that have, like, destroyed this country and made it worse in every way? Cool, okay. And are actually, like, really inefficient methods of travel compared to, like, trains? Eventually, the productive become virtual slaves to the unproductive, and the society collapses economically, intellectually, and morally. Yeah, the innovation from capitalism is the chicken sandwich wars, where most of them taste exactly the same. And then the real horror starts. If you think I'm exaggerating, just ask someone who fled the Soviet Union or Cuba or Venezuela. Yeah, ask the slave owners that fled Cuba what happened to their farms that had slaves. Yeah, the slave owners from Cuba were actually punished for being slave owners, for owning slave, for owning human beings. How fucked up is that, man? They were trying to put them in jail and execute them for owning human beings and forcing them to do hard labor. It's crazy. Venezuela. Just ask them what they think about communism. For all its risk and inequities, they prefer freedom. And we... They prefer the country that, you know is already meddling with their home country. Like, America had a hand in all of those countries and how they got fucked up. We should, too. Cuba just is... Uh, Cuba is making vaccines for cancer. <laughs> Come on, man. Cuba is at, like, the forefront of so much medical research how you, how you can do that, despite the embargo. I'm Brad Thompson, professor of political science at Clemson University for Prager University. In short, engraved on Karl Marx's tombstone in Highgate Cemetery in North London are the following words. The philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. 
substitute the word professor for the word philosopher. We really don't have philosophers anymore, and you get right to the core of Marx's enduring attraction to the contemporary world. What? Marx demands that the intellectual class, the professors of law, sociology, history, women's studies, anthropology, journalism, and so on. They didn't have women's studies in Karl Marx's time. They didn't have women back then. Come out of the ivory tower and join the barricades to see themselves not as the preservers <sighs> of the dusty past, but the creators of a new and glorious future. The lure has... <laughs> if you just change what Karl Marx was saying... He really was saying something else. Yeah, you're right. I never knew that. Proven to be very strong, and it's not hard to understand why. How much more meaningful, exciting, and romantic to see yourself as an agent of change rather than a mere academic. How much more meaningful, exciting, and romantic to see the young people who fill up your classroom as potential soldiers in the cause. What the fuck are you saying? Are you saying teachers are just like... They don't think they're cool, so they want to radicalize people to get them to think they're cool. What a horrible analysis. Send them into the world with the same revolutionary spirit, the same disgust toward bourgeois middle class values. That bourgeois and middle class are not the same thing. Middle class people are proletariat. Like, if you knew anything about Marxism, you would know that. <laughs> you feel and you've done your job. Like, and Marx didn't have a problem with fucking middle class people. He wanted people to own the factory they worked at. We're talking large scale here, man. We must give these lecture hall revolutionaries their due. Look around. For the most part, they've succeeded. Drill into any current leftist movement. Environmentalism, critical race theory, Dude. the massive expansion of the welfare state, not to mention diversity, equity, and inclusion office. Dude, literally Sweden... Literally, Scandinavia, tell me why those countries are doing well with these things. This is at every university and major corporation. Yeah, I love that. And it's like SJW, CRT, fucking, you know, gays, and they're even having diversity? What the hell? <laughs> you will find Marxism at its core, a contempt of the Enlightenment and the Judeo-Christian value system from which capitalism springs. Capitalism has nothing to do with Judeo-Christianity. It's kind of insane that he keeps making that comparison. Marx's most famous call to action, workers of the world unite, was not, of course, to the professoriate, but to the laboring class. That didn't work out so well. Workers, especially in the United States, turned out to be more interested in refrigerators than revolutions. Yeah, because of propaganda and the red scare because the people who you know in the land of the free communists were put in jail the only barricade they were passionate about was a white picket fence in front of a green suburban lawn except for when they were unionizing when they were actually like you know doing labor strikes and labor movements throughout the 30s and 40s prior to world war ii poor, benighted souls, the appeal of Marxism was somehow lost on them. Maybe because they didn't go to college. What? But the no. intellectual class never lost faith. Even after Stalin, even after Mao, even after Castro wrecked Cuba, uh -huh. even after Pol Pot murdered <laughs> millions of his fellow Cambodians. Yeah, dude. Castro wrecked Cuba. It definitely wasn't America and the embargo. No. No. Even after Hugo Chavez destroyed the strongest economy in South America, mm -hmm. the academic elite remained true believers. Indeed, in a world without faith, where God is dead, Marxism has become, in effect, a substitute religion. That's so embarrassing. That it, This is pathetic. God is dead and Karl Marx is him now. One of the major strengths of Marxism in contrast to both modern liberalism and conservatism, is the unyielding commitment of its followers to this faith, to bear witness to it and to act on it. It summons these followers to join a crusade to destroy the evil that is capitalism and to create the good that is communism. I'm kind of losing it a little bit now. He's saying like, all Karl Marx wants is good instead of evil. 
How fucked up is that? <laughs> In our secular world, the Marxist ideal gives the Marxist true believer a reason to live, a reason to die, and a reason to kill. <laughs> God damn, dude. Monsters like Lenin, Stalin, mm -hmm. Mao, Kim Il-sung, Ho Chi Minh, and Pol Pot yeah. took this to the nth degree and murdered millions. Dude, how can you say, oh my God, how can you say that Kim Il-sung is fucking Marxist? For the record, the latter two were politically educated in France. Pol Pot studied at the Sorbonne. If you think I'm exaggerating the evils of Marxism, if you think Stalin and the- Ho Chi Minh literally used the Vietnamese army to end Pol Pot's geno genocide? I know. I know. And Pol Pot was like an American puppet. Anyway, it's pretty crazy. Those other guys got communism wrong, but your new democratic socialism will get it right. <laughs> think again. Yeah, look at how well it's working in Sweden and Finland and Denmark and Norway. They're all dying. Marxism leads a society toward a fixed goal, a utopian vision of pure freedom in which the individual is liberated from the false consciousness of capitalism. Like all you need to do is just be like Scandinavia. Unfortunately, by Marx's own definition, the path to this utopia requires the destruction economically, politically and morally of every vestige of civilization as we know it. He literally like just spent almost 20 minutes saying communism is all of the bad things, but also it you know is really good for workers and everybody also is really it's really good for society. Um but also it's really bad, guys, trust me. <laughs> that's that's hard to it's hard to deal with. Uh how are you getting through watching stuff like this? You know, I think it's bold of you to assume that I'm alive right now.